for the time being, let's shift focus to Keystone Realtors. It reported a strong quarter for business update. To discuss this and more, how are the demand trends are shaping up on ground? We're joined by uh, Mr. Baman uh, Ristham Irani, the chairman and MD of the company who joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Baman. Uh, good morning and good to see you in. Well, give us a sense first in terms of the breakup. Where has sales come from in the past quarter? How much of it was from re redevelopment projects? How much from luxury? And how much from mid-housing? Uh, if you could briefly break up those numbers. Thank you, Nigel. Um, I'm very happy to be on your show to express that we've done extremely well. We've done better than the guidance that we had offered for the last year. And uh, we've, you know, we've given a guidance about four new projects being launched in the last year. That is to say that one project every quarter, we crossed that milestone in the third quarter itself. And in the last quarter, we again launched two projects. Um, so we, we were six projects as of last year. Our sales have come in pretty strongly from um, our uh, township projects. At the same point of time, the redevelopment projects. To give you an idea on these two, I would say the township projects amount to about 38 to 40 percent, and the rest of it comes from the redevelopment projects that we are doing in Mumbai City. Mm -hmm. I, I see a strong trend, and I was hearing uh, Mr. Kusagi speak right now with regards to the affordable housing. I am seeing a strong trend again over there. The numbers are conti con continuously rising, but what always takes the shine is the premium and luxury housing that, that you know, always manages to get the headlines everywhere. And those sales have also been pretty robust. Bowman on the uh, morning, uh, Prashant here. Uh, on the affordable Actually, side, uh, one, one has been hearing, I mean, the supply is lacking. It actually, uh, I was talking to a large, uh, one of the largest funds and they were saying that we're looking for opportunities in the affordable side because we want to deploy because that'll be luxury, of course, is growing gangbusters, but on the affordable side, not so much. Uh, do you think, uh, I mean, there's hope, oh, you know, th there is hope that it'll pick up at some point, but just wanted your thoughts. So affordable housing will become affordable more with the initiatives of the government. We're looking at more and more, uh, you know, affordable housing moving outside of the city <clears throat> and more in the MMR area. But there's been a very strong trend of uh, homes that are sold on uh, the Mira Road, Birar, Versailles Belt. At the same point of time, Pane, which I would just classify as mid-mass, that's a little above affordable housing, has been doing tremendously well. As a matter of fact, we've seen a great growth come from that market. And uh, Kalyan, Dongdivili, those areas are again seeing a surge. Uh, we are looking at launching a project out there this year. Uh, affordable housing will do better the moment the government puts in certain initiatives in terms of giving A, maybe a lower stamp duty, B, maybe lower charges that are payable by uh, payable for the FSI that one gets uh, for affordable housing. And of course, construction costs continue to be the highest um, of the cost matrix as far as affordable housing goes as we rise higher and higher. Uh, with, with our building sizes going all the way up to maybe about, you know, 100, 120 meters being the norm today. Uh, we do see a surge coming up this year because of the demand that has come up, but these affordable housing prices are inching up a little more than what the commercial or uh, what the uh, premium housing uh, prices are growing. Okay. It's interesting you say that, Baman. Hi, this is Sonia here. You know, a lot of yeah. micro markets in the MMR area are picking up now, right? Um, and especially for luxury housing. So I do understand that at Keystone Realtors, you guys are looking at places like Chembur, a Sivri, a Varsova as well. So I want to understand what is the kind of developable area that you're uh, looking to do, say, over the next couple of years in some of these micro markets. And also, if you map the prices, right, for example, in a place like Varsova, prices have gone nowhere in the last five years. So do you think luxury homes could find buyers in some of these micro markets? I would say to start off with your question on Varsova, uh, the, the fact that the prices haven't gone up in the last five years is a huge opportunity. Uh, that, that particular part of the city has been very, very, uh, you know, has a great potential to be beautifully developed. Um, we've got the entire coastline out there. We've got a great buzzing commercial developments happening out there. We've got a lot of the young uh, population of the city living out there, and we are very focused on that market. We believe that at um, the premium housing segment, there are five or six things that uh, one really needs to keep an eye on. One is the development of infrastructure. 
Two is the fact that where the younger population or the uh, higher earning younger population is moving to, what kind of social infrastructure is being created in that area, and what's the original gentry of that particular location. And on all of these counts, I would say the Andheri, especially Varsova Belt, really excels and we are very, very strong in that market. As a matter of fact, we will, we will see launches uh, you know, in the future coming up from there. But as I'm restricted to speak only about my, uh, my, my published uh, report, I, I would say, say only this, that we see our uh, development on the um, uh, premium housing coming up in that market as well. Prices will continue to rise because of the demand out there. But I'm very happy to state that most of the developers are following uh, uh, or rather taking their premium out of velocity rather than trying to take their premium out of a price rise, and which is which is very, very good. Okay. I know the and reason you, I asked you asked me another question, but I, I think I, I slipped on answering that, Sonia. You want to just ask me again? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, actually, I was asking about some of the other hot spots, right? Um, so, Chembur, for example, is seeing a real estate explosion right now. It's suddenly become a premium uh, real estate market hot spot. Uh, and prices have gone up over there about 15-20%, I think, in the last five years. And you guys are also uh, having something coming up in Chembur, I understand. But do you think that there will be a, a, an oversupply in some of these places just because of what's happening in the last one to two years? And what kind of potential do you see here? So uh, let's go with data. Uh, the sure. you know number of homes that are getting launched are plenty, but still the um, total available stock because of the sales happening are dropping in numbers, especially in MMR that did almost 41% of the total sales as of last year. I'm seeing that there is a stronger demand than there is a supply coming up. Supply also gets restricted because of you know real estate being a longer uh, cycle. And in terms of when you go and tie up a project, there's almost a 13 to 14 month wait before you are able to launch it. That is, if all goes well. Chembur, uh, which has seen a growth in prices, is more to do with the fact that there's a great amount of infrastructure surge in that market. Uh, you're very well connected. Uh, it was the original uh, you know, lower FSI area. Even today, it is controlled by height. Uh, there is a height restriction for most of the buildings in that area. Chembur is blessed with a lot of greenery and, uh, you know, there's a huge golf course around which a lot of premium development will take place. But Chembur also has the ability to uh, be developed in the mid-mass and aspirational category. That is to say, homes between, um, I would say, one and a half uh, crores and going all the way up to about uh, five crores would get sold very, very well in that market because of the connectivity of that uh, particular area. And again, uh, as infrastructure continues to surge and as the city grows in that direction, we see uh, a lot of interest in the chamber market, but that's not the only market that is growing. Like I mentioned, Thane is doing extremely well. Thane continues to be the largest growing market uh, in the MMR uh, because of the very fact that there's great amount of infrastructure boost out there. You've got the entire metro going through there. There's lots of developments, whether it is in hospitality or in healthcare or in education or even just uh, commercial development, which takes place in Navi Mumbai, which is hardly a 20 minute drive from certain parts of Thane, which make it very, very interesting. We are also seeing a very strong surge and that has not undermined the Western suburbs. They've always ruled the roost and uh, uh, not ours, but some other developers have done extremely well with their new launches and we've heard about them. Our new launches in those areas also is something that excites us a lot. And we are consistently working because that was our mother market. We were the ones that, you know, we were, we were literally born out of that Western belt. Uh, overall, Mumbai and MMR are surging as far as real estate is concerned. And there's a very strong demand. I, I would say a whole host of reasons which have been, you know, debated time and again are, are adding to the sheen or the shine of this particular market uh, going forward as well. Okay, all right. Uh, Baman, final question before we let you go. Uh, could you tell us, as a percentage of your sales mix, how much is redevelopment? And where do you see this number headed? You know, I went for, uh, I was roaming around in Bandra yesterday since it was a holiday, and I saw a couple of uh, projects coming up on Bandstand. You have taken up, I think, two redevelopment projects, if not more over there. So uh, for the company on the whole, what is the percentage coming in from redevelopment? And where is that number headed? Nigel, for a very long time, uh, we've seen our coastline not getting developed the way it should. And uh, cities around the world, 
grow on the basis of their, or, or rather are beautified on the basis of their coastline development. Uh, Bandra is blessed with, again, a great coastline, as you're aware, and we've got uh, the Mount Mary area, we've got the entire bandstand, we've got Carter Road, all of these having tremendous potential for growth. And, you know, at, at Keystone, we had mentioned earlier also in our guidance that we are very focused on the blue view and the green view, the blue view being the oceans, obviously, and the green view being wherever there are large open gardens or golf courses, etc. Uh, this strategy has worked out very well for us. We are, uh, you know, showing a lot of interest in redevelopments in these areas. And redevelopment as a whole would be roughly around, I would say, 45 to 50 percent of our sales uh, going forward. And Mumbai market, as we all know, uh, needs a huge rejuvenation. Uh, you know, there's always a question of oversupply coming up. I don't think that's happening, as I mentioned earlier in the in, in, if you look at the data that is there from most of the IPCs that's coming up, the absorption is happening faster than the launches that take place. And as I mentioned, real estate is a slightly longer cycle. You have more than 13 to 15 months, which you have to wait after you die of a project before you can go ahead to launch it because there are various approvals that are there. Uh, Bandra, I see as a very strong market, whether it's east or west. And we've traditionally uh, always had projects in this area. We've upped our uh, PD to go ahead and acquire more in the Bandra East and Bandra West because this is one market that gives you the entire spectrum, whether it is yeah. the mid-mass housing or the premium housing as well. Bowman, we leave it there. I mean, you know, anyway, everyone in Bombay, you've got these boards, right? Mumbai is upgrading. So I hope, I mean, you know, in the, over the next couple of years, we, so we see that upgraded uh, version and uh, some of the infra projects, etc., improving connectivity. Thank you very much for joining us, Bowman. And see you. Thank it's, you. It's uh, great to speak with you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good luck.